Hello and welcome back. It's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're going to be playing Hidden Patterns. Now, we have a viewer on the channel, Phoenix Aki, who's just started his own venture, kind of um, his own trip on basically constructing Sudoku variants. So this is actually his third puzzle. Um, he was kind enough to actually email me about the second one, although by the time I got around to checking my email, he's already sent through the third one. So how embarrassing is it that I check email so often that people are actually creating new puzzles quicker than I'm actually checking it. Now, uh, with the idea of hidden, hidden patterns here, you've got what I would probably describe as almost like a Mandela behind Sleuth. And uh, clearly he's trying to understand and discern the hidden, hidden meaning and kind of message behind this particular Mandela. Now, I'm not quite sure I get the title, but at the same time, we haven't actually solved the puzzle. So let's take a look at today's puzzle and rule set where maybe we will make head or tails of it. Hidden patterns by Phoenix Aki and the following set of rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Place the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column, and then of course, every three by three box, if I can actually select one. Then we have the XV rule set with negative constraints. So cells connected by an X must sum up to 10 and cells connected by a V must sum up to five. So if this cell is a two, for example, these two cells need to sum up to 10. Therefore, this would have to be an eight. And these two cells have to sum up to five. Therefore, this one would have to be a three. Now, remember, negative constraints do apply. If I put a three in here, for example, that's broken the puzzle because there is no X, sorry, no V between them and they add up to five. If I put a two in here, these two cells add up to 10 and there's no X between them. That also breaks the puzzle. And then last but not least, we've got adjacent digits on the orange Dutch whisper line must differ by at least four. And digits connected by what do I, must be consecutive. Sorry, I read that a bit fast. It's uh, actually two remaining rules. Up here, so essentially if this cell is a four, for example, the two adjacent digits to be four or more away would have to be eight or nine. Just as an example. Uh, just watch out if you're familiar with German whisper lines, you can have a five on there and I can do something cheeky like one and nine and get away with it because it is indeed four or more away. Then of course we've got white dots are consecutive, no mention of negative constraints. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna assume it doesn't apply. This is three, for it to be consecutive, this would have to be two or four. That's all the rules we have for today. So as always, if you wanna play along, link will be in the description down below for you to do so. With that said, I've restarted the clock to see how I get on. So I'm kind of just having a quick look around and in general, it feels like I'm gonna be able to color this puzzle fairly quickly. Quick reminder, two cells that add up to five, one of them could be one, four, one of them would be two, three. I of course don't know which is which at this point, although the Dutch whisperer I imagine and the white crop kiddo will help us later. What I do know is that they're different. So one is gonna be blue, one is gonna be green, Two blue cells can't have a, you know, a third in the same column, so this would have to be green. In the same box, can't be more greens, that would have to be blue. In the same row, this would have to be green. In the same box, this would have to be blue. Green in here means that these are blue, can't have three greens in the column. Uh, this is green because I've got two blues here looking at it, and in fact, this is definitely blue. I mean, Sudoku is kind of pushing it that way. Uh, these, of course, are high digits. To get to 10, you need something like 1, 2, 3, 4, coupled with 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, and I color these red. So this will be green because this is blue. This is red. Uh, this is clearly red, and these two cells are the same because whatever this high digit is, this is the same digit to be able to add up to 10. That's high. This V is clearly not green. We've already got two in the column. This is high. This is high. This is high. This cell, I'm actually unsure. Actually, this cell, let's do that. That's green uh, because we've got blue in the in the row already. These are highs. We should probably think about what this is. This is a blue-red combo because we've already got two greens. The blue and the red almost don't matter as in what order they're in. So I am going to just have a flash on them. Now, I feel fairly certain that this is green. No, it's blue. 
Interesting. All right, so let's think about this. So this is a low digit. A white croquet dot is going to point you to another digit that's either low or five. I can't get to a high digit in just, you know, one. But I know it's not five because that's an X. If that's five, that would be another five, breaking Sudoku to get to 10. Now, if it's green, I'm going to say that breaks the negative constraint because we know that these two cells will be the same. And obviously, because it's not repeating it, otherwise it would break Sudoku. And therefore, this would have to add up to five. And this is not a white crop key dot. This is a white crop key dot, not a V. So the only way this works, if this is blue and this is red. Right, this is green and red now. I know that. I've got two blues in the box. And which one is which, I'm not sure of. Right, lovely. So. Oh, of course. Dutch whisper line. Remember how I showed you the five and the one and nine? This is exactly what we have in here. We've got a low digit and a high digit. And the only way this works is if this is a five in the middle. Otherwise, the polarities have to be the same. So that is five. That's our first digit. Can't believe it took me so long to show you that. One, four, nine, one, one, four, six. Um, this presumably would have to be the nine, the one, the four, the six. This cannot be the one nine, so that's the four, that's the six. This would have to be, I assume, the three, two, and then eight. Ironic how the two, three, and eight, and the one, five, nine, all of my guesses were basically correct. This is four, six for my examples, uh, given this is a four here, pointing at it. Um, four gives me one, four, six. Don't know. Actually, we do know here. That's one, nine. This is two. This is three. This is eight. Lovely. This is fairly sure that this is going to be green. I mean, it can be one. It's not one, nine. And it's not four, six. It is green, and therefore it's two, eight, which you can see Sudoku's kind of pushing both of them in there. This is one, this is four, and this is six. Not sure what these are yet. We know that this is a high digit. I kind of missed out on coloring it. And I'm not entirely certain how to connect all of these. So I'm gonna just pencil mark, pencil mark, pencil mark. And then these two are seven or eight. And then again, two, three, seven, eight. Not a good set, really. Sorry, taking a second just to see if there's something obvious I'm missing. Six is not here. That's six. That's seven. This is seven, eight. Now, they're clearly kind of like the opposite seven, eight. So if that's three, that would be eight to make sure they don't add up to 10 and vice versa. If this is two, this would have to be seven to make sure they don't add up to 10. Otherwise, I need an X, which I don't have. Then these seven, eights, this cell is in here. And then I have a second seven, eight, this cell in particular, which can't be there next to this one because we know that these two would form an X. And if I put it in here, I've broken the puzzle. So that's seven, eight, that's five. And then these cells are one, which can only be in here. And then five to finish up. No fives is a five. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need seven and nine. That's nine, 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 seven. Because of this nine. These two cells are known. One, two, three, four. I need five and six. That's the six. That's the five. I have a four, which is in here. I have a five, which can only be in there. Uh, that's one, two. Where's three? Three is in one of these two cells. Four, five, six. Seven is in here. Three, nine. Can't have the three next to seven because there's no X. So that's three. That's nine. I guess the reverse is true. That nine couldn't be next to the one either. The two and eight, um, still not helpful actually. So I was kind of thinking that there would be a negative constraint here that would help, but not yet. Seven, eight pair tells me there's another two, three somewhere in here, plus nine. 
which I can't tell where it goes. The nine can't be next to the one because there's no X. So that's nine, that's two, three. This is seven, eight, uh, just to complete the column. Five is not here. So essentially I have another seven, eight, another two, three. Where did they go? It's kind of the question that we're trying to answer. And I'm struggling to answer it actually. So there's another seven, eight and a nine. Don't know. So this two, three is the same as this two, three. And Sudoku basically says it's gonna be these two. Because I need to place, you know, these two cells in these three and clearly one of them is going to be on the X, so the second one has to be joining it to actually add up to 10. I mean, that was the pencil mark all along anyway, but this 2, 3 doesn't have the other 7, 8 in here, it's got to be there. So that's the 9. The 6 is not here, not there, that's the 6. The 5 has to be here. There's a second 7, 8, which again can't be there, otherwise it would be an X. And then this is the 9. Now we've got two, three, seven, eights. In here is a five, I'm gonna say. Uh, this is another seven, eight to complete the column. And then I have another two, three, and nine. That's the nine, that's the two, three. And this is two, three, seven, eight. And I don't know what it is until I figure out some of these things. I may have to use another color flash to disambiguate these things. It will kind of help me a bit. Seven, I don't need it, two, three, eight therefore this is a two eight pair not three seven this is therefore seven this is three that can't be two otherwise it would be a v that's two that's two that's eight eight if i can type that's seven three two eight seven uh, that two can't be next to an eight that's seven that's eight that's seven that's eight remember what i said earlier about the seven being joined with a two and the eight with the three to not break the negative constraint, two, three, and uh, we're very nearly there actually. Pretty smooth sailing. I mean, it's incredible construction for the third puzzle in this in from um, Phoenix Aki. I mean, beautiful puzzle. I didn't even have to use letters today. Uh, now I am going to have to do this uh, whilst I commend Phoenix's work. Um, but, you know, you know I wasn't going to let this go. That would have just irritated all of us. It would have been on the back of our minds for sure. And red and blue. Done. Happy with that. Hope you guys enjoyed the puzzle and the video. Um, fairly smooth sailing for an XV puzzle with negative constraints. And I'll see you back for the next one. Bye-bye for now.